Hello, and welcome to probably the easiest ravine guide that does not involve the Sky Shredder, because that tower is too overpowered on this map. Anyways, let's get started. First, we're going to be placing a Dart Monkey right over here, as high as possible, in such a way so that the range border goes through this part of the tree right here. And this Dart Monkey will go on strong. Next, we're going to place a dart monkey right over here in such a way so that the range border goes through this corner right over here and this other corner right over here. And this guy will get set to last. And then this one, you just shove him as top right as possible into the corner. You can use a visual indicator for it, but it's not needed, so I'm not going to go over it here. If you've gotten this set up right, you should be round six. For round 7, you're going to upgrade your bottom right dart monkey to a 010, and then you have multiple options. You can either click the sword 23 times and click it once when there's only one green left, or you could just spam it mid round like I do. I prefer that. Anyways, before round 8, place a dart monkey right over here as right as possible so that the range border goes through this part of the bridge right here this guy will also get set to strong. For round 9, place a dart monkey right over here as top left as possible, and we're going to set this guy to strong. For round 10, place another dart monkey right over here, just shoved between your other dart monkey and the track. This guy will go on first. After round 12, we're going to place Sada right over here, as bottom right as possible. For round 14, we're going to upgrade the first Dart Monkey we placed to a 010 quick shots. Yes, this is needed to beat the round, and yes, you have to do it. We're going to be getting a triple shots later anyway, so why not? And then before round 15, place a sniper just somewhere in this corner, so it can still see the entire bit of the left track. And set it to strong, that's very important. For round 16, upgrade your left quick shot dart monkey to a very quick shot dart monkey. And we'll also get him to triple shot in the middle of 17, or just at some point before 18, doesn't really matter. Before round 19, we're going to place a druid as top right as possible, just shoved into this corner, and we'll set him to last. And then before 21, we're going to upgrade this druid to a 110. We'll have to get the second upgrade, whichever one you decide to get second, mid round. And then for 22, there shouldn't be any RNG, because there, there just shouldn't be, I don't know how to explain it left side is always consistent, and you literally have Sada right side. But for 23, we are going to use a Leaping Sword right when the round starts, just for some increased consistency. On 25, you shouldn't have to do anything, but there's probably a chance that you have to use a Leaping Sword if something leaks, probably on the bottom lane, so be careful of that. I don't think you have to usually, but yeah. And then in the middle of 26, upgrade that druid from earlier to a 130 druid of the jungle and set him to first. For 28, I'd recommend you use a leaping sword right as the round starts, but weird stuff happens on this round. I don't, it's, it's really weird. Like, that does not usually happen. You don't usually get very close to dying. That doesn't happen. Just use a leaping sword right as the round starts and you should be safe. And do the same thing for 30. And speaking of 30, for this round we are going to place a sniper right over here as high as possible in such a way so that he can see both entrances right over here. And then we're also going to place a spike factory right over here as bottom right as possible. This isn't needed for this round, 
it is needed for the next few rounds though, so yeah. Why not get it now? If you use your leaping sword on 28 properly, also try and use it as early as possible here and just hope that it goes left side. Or just try and aim it in such a way so that it does go left side so you don't end up having to do weird stuff like that. Yeah, I completely messed up this part. For round 36, we're going to place a village right over here, as top right as possible, next to your spike factory, and we're going to upgrade it to a 002. And then, we're going to place a spike factory right over here, in such a way so that the outside of the range border touches the inside of the track border on both of these tracks. And then, we're going to upgrade our right spike factory to a 002 and set it to smart. Also, leaping sword right away. Just do that. We're going to be upgrading our left spike factory to smart spikes, but you don't want to do that mid-round, because if you upgrade it to long range, it'll start hitting the other tracks, and there's a chance you die to the camos. And once you get smart spikes, set it to smart. And now, we're going to be upgrading both of our spike factories to 102s, because... yes. For round 38, you're going to want to set your Druid of the Jungle to Strong. That is very important for this round. If you'd like, you can also use the Leaping Sword. You don't have to, though. Just don't use one on 39, because we need that for round 40. And then set your Druid back to first for 39. For round 40, upgrade your right Spike Factory to a Spiked Balls, and use a leaping sword once the mob pops. You might want to do it a tad bit earlier than I do, because, I don't know, just just use it when the mob pops, slightly before it hits the spike pile. And then before 42, get your other spike factory to a spiked balls as well. For 43, place an alchemist right over here, as bottom right as possible, next to your right spiked balls, and upgrade it to a 200 acidic mixture dip. You should also probably use leaping sword right as the round starts, but it doesn't really matter. Just, just use leaping sword and you should be fine. Now get that acidic mixture dip alchemist to a 300 berserker brew. Then you're going to get your village to a 102 bigger range, and then Place an alchemist right below your other spike factory and upgrade it to a 300 berserker brew as well. Now we're going to get our village to jungle drums and we're going to upgrade our sniper to a 420 main Moab. Get 320 before 420. That is pretty important. Also, use a Leaping Sword the second round 47 starts. That should just make it super consistent, and you should win every single time. You should be able to afford main Moab before the second Moab on round 50. And now, we're going to upgrade our right alchemist to a 420. Also, get 320 on your other alchemist, a 454. Kind of important, but not really. On 54, once balloons start to reach your left spike pile, use a leaping sword, because if you don't, it's gonna get overwhelmed. Now, get your left alchemist to a 420 stronger stimulant as well. Now, we're going to get the tower that wins us the game. A mortar monkey. Right over here, above your spike factory. You should use a leaping sword on 56 when balloons start to reach your left spike pile. I mistimed it, and it ended up going on the right side, but I still ended up being fine. So, yeah, just use the leaping sword and hope it goes left side. 
And now we're going to upgrade our mortar to a 420 big one. From now until the end of the game, we're going to move our mortar to a different spot each round. For odd rounds, you're going to put it so it's right on top of Sada, and for even rounds, you're going to put it so that it's right over here. For 63, it's very easy. Just use a sword charge on the first wave, and big one should completely clean up the rest. For 75, we're going to put our main mob to first. This should allow it to just stun everything that we need it to. That, that's really it. You can also use a leaping sword to speed things up if you'd like. It probably helps. Not sure. Haven't tried it. But you do not want to use a sword charge because we do need that for next round. And speaking of next round, on 76, just use a sword charge. Yeah, that's really it. So, for 78, all you gotta do, sword charge both waves of ceramics. You're also going to want to set your main mob to strong. I forget to do that until next round, just, just do that now. It'll help. I sword charge early here. I don't know why I thought I had to sword charge. Sword charge the wave of ceramics. <laughs> you won't have to use that leaping sword. I just panicked because I sword charged on not the wave. And my spike pile still managed to tank it somehow. Also, yeah, by now your main Moab should be on strong. Just, just make sure that it is. That's very important. And you're also going to want to move your big one to this spot here. I moved it to a different spot, but you don't have to do that. And now, you're going to upgrade your mortar to the biggest one as soon as you can. This guy is actually surprisingly good on this map. Never would have thunk. Here I'm just moving up the mortar to speed up the round. That's really it. For 82, place a village right over here. It's hard to explain, really, a visual indicator for this placement, but you want it to be able to see into the water just a little bit, because we're going to want to fit both first strikes that we get later into its discount radius. And speaking of discounting, upgrade it to a 102. We need that discount. First, place a glue gunner right up here and upgrade it to a 023 mob glue and set it to strong. We won't be getting relentless for this run because it's not needed and it's also just not in the budget. Before 83, place an engineer right over here and upgrade it to a 030 cleansing foam and set it right to the front of the even track. We'll get this guy to an overclock later but we don't actually need to use the overclock until 92. But you can use it to speed things up, for sure. I get overclock here before 85. I don't use it until 92, but 
feel free to use it just to speed things up, and you can micro the mortar a bit just to speed things up. Otherwise, it takes a really long time to get to them. So, yeah. Just at some point before 88, place a 204 boomerang right over here and set it to strong. Very important that it's set to strong and that it is 204 and not 024. And now, in the middle of 88, or just whenever you can, get another 204 boomerang right next to your other one and also set it to strong. Once you've gotten that, we're going to get our top village to jungle drums. Somewhat important. Actually, very important, actually. We need our MOA presses to have increased attack speed. That is quite important for ZOMG rounds later. Oh yeah, on round 90, feel free to use a sword charge if you'd like. Shouldn't be needed, but I don't know, you might want to. And then, for 91, just don't use an overclock. that That's the only rule. Don't use an overclock. And now, we're also going to set our engineer's cleansing foam to that tree stump right over there. Because we want it to decamo all of the DDTs, because nothing we have except Sada can really see camo. And the main mod too, and the spike factory, but that's not enough. For 92, a few seconds after the round starts, like, just a few, Overclock your biggest one. When this guy is overclocked, he goes absolutely ham and basically just stuns most things in place while slowly killing them. And that's pretty neat. If you'd like to, you can also use a sword charge here. Not needed. You can also overclock again off cooldown to speed up the ZOMG killing process. Yet again, not needed though. For 93, you don't have to do anything, which is nice. You can use an ability or two if you'd like, just not the overclock, because we do need that for 94. For 94, all you gotta do, overclock once you see the first blue moabs start splitting. Once they start splitting, that's when things are starting to pop, and you need to destroy all of the BFBs quickly. So yeah, just do that. And then for the blue Moab insides of the ZOMGs, use a sword charge. That's really it. 98's gonna be like this, but exactly the same, actually. It's gonna be no different. And you might be surprised, why don't we have a Sabotage Ninja for 95? We don't need one. Just look at this. Once you see a single DDT on screen, overclock your biggest one. Sada just absolutely destroys them. The biggest one isn't even doing that much, it's mostly Sada here. And once all of the DDTs are gone, move your biggest one away so we can stall the overclock cooldown with our main Moab. You should be able to stall it a good bit so it's right off cooldown. If you can't, just use a sword charge for the first wave of fortified Moabs on 96, instead of the overclock. And speaking of 96, you're going to need to buy a 004 Shattering Shells right over here and set it at the front. And if you stalled your overclock cooldown good enough, use it once the first wave of Moabs shows up. If not, use a Sword Charge and then overclock. And yeah, overclock biggest one just destroys most of the round. And also, overclock off cooldown just to speed up the process of killing the ZOMGs. Not, might not be needed, but just interesting. Yeah, biggest one is kind of good with the strategy. <laughs> Here, you either want to micro your biggest one, or get incredibly scared and almost die. So you should probably micro your biggest one a little bit. And use the Leaping Sword just to kill the ZOMG layer faster. Or you could buy a first strike, because we're going to need one of those and use it, but I was too stupid to think of that. So yeah, 
I got scared and almost died, so I uh, quickly moved my shattering shells over. So just buy a first strike and use it to kill one of these OMGs. That's the best option here. Yeah, so I got scared and moved my shattering shells over and almost died. Topside had like two spikes left. And for 98, it's literally the exact same thing as 94 because we have shattering shells. So, overclock, once you see the first blue Moabs start to split. And yeah, that should destroy all of the BFBs and all that's left is the ZOMGs. We're going to do the same thing that we did on 94 and sword charge their insides. They should all pop at about the same time, so you should be able to get very good value with sword charge. For 99, all you gotta do is overclock your biggest one. Once the fortified DDTs reach the bottom and Sada can start attacking them. I do it slightly too early here, but that doesn't really matter. You might even want to do it slightly earlier. And now, we probably have the hardest round of the run. Round 100. First, buy two 040 subs right here, first strikes, and we're going to use their abilities, but at different times. What you're going to want to do is micro your biggest one so it's on top of the bad at all times, and also use a leaping sword off cooldown or just whenever the game lets you, and use a sword charge also off cooldown while microing your biggest one. Yeah, kind of annoying, but it's doable. And when the first strikes come off cooldown, use one of them. And then, the thing that I found is the most consistent from here. When overclock comes off cooldown, don't overclock your biggest one. Overclock Sada, because she is most of our bad damage right now. And you can use another leaping sword if you'd like. Might not be needed, but yeah. And once the bad is about to go off screen, use your second first strike. That should completely wipe out the insides, and you should now have your Ravine Black Border with a not boring strategy. Biggest one and Sada. I hope this guide helped you out. Have a nice rest of your day. Goodbye.